In this example, I'm going to solve this logarithmic equation. Um, it's a logarithmic equation because what I'm trying to solve for, x, is part of a logarithmic expression. When I'm solving logarithmic equations, there are sort of two general types of equations we have. When I have logs on just one side of the equation, or if I have logs on both sides. Sort of obvious here, I just have log on one side of the equation. In that case, I want to try to rewrite the equation so it just has a single logarithm equal to a number, and then I'm going to translate it from logarithmic form to exponential form and use that to solve the problem. The problem here then is I have two logs on the left, so I have to use properties of logarithms to sort of condense this equation into a single log. Since that's a plus in between, we had a rule of a property of logarithms that says the sum of two logs, sum is plus, the sum of two logs is just the log of the product. So I'm going to rewrite it with a single log, but I'm going to multiply the x plus 8 and the x plus 4 together. So I'm going to have log base 5, and then I get x plus 8 times x plus 4, and that's equal to 1. So I've just replace the two logs with a single log. Since it was plus, they get multiplied together. And now this just has log base 5 of something equals 1. I can translate this from logarithmic form to exponential form. What I remember is the base stays the same. So this is log base 5. That means I'm going to have to have 5 to a power. What's my power? The logarithm is always equal to a missing exponent, so the 1 is my exponent. So what I'm going to get here is 5 to the first power equals x plus 8 times x plus 4. And I'm trying to solve for x. Now, x is inside these parentheses. I'm going to have to get rid of the parentheses, but to do that, then I'm going to have to do FOIL. So 5 to the first power is just 5. When I do FOIL, first I take x times x. So x times x is x squared. Outer, I'm going to take x times 4. And then times positive 4, so that's going to be plus 4x. Inner, I'm going to take positive 8 times x. So that's going to give me plus 8x. And then last, positive 8 times positive 4 will give me positive 32. When I look at this now, I see I've got an x squared, so that's a quadratic equation. I can't solve that by getting x by itself. Uh, typically, uh, what we want to do then is we want to get this quadratic equation equal to 0 instead of 5, and then I'll have a couple options. Either I'll be able to factor if I can't factor, I have to do something like completing the square or the quadratic formula. So let's see what happens. I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides, just once on both sides. I can also combine like terms here and put those together. So I'm going to get x squared. 4x plus 8x is 12x. And then I'm going to get plus 27. And I'm going to hope I can factor this. So if I can factor it, I'm going to, going to do sort of FOIL in reverse. I know that the x squared has to come from x times x. With the 27, I really don't have much choice. It's going to have to be 1 times 27, 2 doesn't go in, 3 times 9, 4 doesn't, 5 doesn't, 6 doesn't, I, nothing else goes in. Since it's plus 27, that means both factors have to have the same sign, so they have to add together to equal 12. Well, 3 and 9 is going to work, so I'm going to get plus 3 and plus 9. And you might want to just look at FOIL a little. x times x is x squared. x times 9, 3 times x, that gives me 9x and 3x, which is 12x. Positive 3 times positive 9 is positive 27. Now, I just look at this, 0 is equal to something times something. The only way that can happen is if one of the somethings is 0. So x plus 3 equals 0, or x plus 9 equals 0. 
When I subtract, I'm going to subtract 3 from both sides. So x equals negative 3. I'm going to subtract 9 from both sides. So I get x equals negative 9. It's important with these logarithmic equations to consider these solutions and what happens if I plug them into the original equation. So if I plug in negative 3, negative 3 plus 8 is 5. That's okay, I can take the log of 5. If I plug negative 3 in here, negative 3 plus 4 is 1. That's okay, I can take the log of 1. Um, so that doesn't appear to give me any trouble. You'll see what I mean in the next, next solution, uh, why I'm saying that. So x equals negative 3 seems to check. Uh, what about x equals negative 9? Well, if I plug negative 9 in up here, negative 9 plus 8, that gives me negative 1, and that gives me log of negative 1. That would say 5 to what power is a negative? Well, I can't take a positive number to a power and get a negative number. And we even said when we talked about logarithmic functions that their domain is the set of positive numbers greater than zero. I can't take the log of zero or the log of a negative number. And so if I plug negative nine in, that gives me a negative here and a negative here. One is bad enough, and I don't really care about the two. But that negative nine then is not really a valid solution. So I shouldn't include it as part of my solution set. So this equation only has one solution, x equals negative 3.